Left five continues for 100, over bump. Right six, bump and dip. Caution slowing into right five, into hairpin right. Into left five, 60, keep right over crest. Left three, it feels flat. Left six, dip. Caution right six, 80. Acute left 60. Left six. Into right four long, 60. Right three, don't cut. Into left four. Into right three, tights 260. Left four, into left four, into a cute right. Into hairpin left. Half long. Stay mid over crest, past junction. Right three long, keep in. Left two long, through dip, crest. Into right five. Into right two late. Into turn left two. Into square right. Left five tight. Into right six. Into left six. To right six, 60. Right one. Into turn left one past junction. And left four. Into your right six, 60. Keep right over jump, 100. Right six over jump, tight to right five. Left six. Right four over small crest, tightens. Into caution, right one down. Into right four, 60. Caution, keep right over crest. Into open, hairpin left. Into right six. Into left two. Into turn left two. To right one over crest. Left five. Left six through dip, 80. Right one, tightens post outside. Into crest. Into right four. Into left four. Portion left six, into immediate turn square left, don't cut. Left rear is on the rim. Two left four long. Two right six. Two right one. Small crest. Into right two. Into left six.
and right three over crest, jump. Eighty, left six through dip, eighty. Double caution, right five over big jump. And left five long to finish. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Right three continues for 100. Left six over jump maybe, 100. Right six through dip, 80. Caution left five over jump, 60. Left three half long, 60. Left four, continues past junction, opens. And left five. Right four, tightens to three, into immediate turn square right, don't cut. 60. Right five, half along. Into left six, half long, 60. Crest into square left, late, don't cut, 80. Right six through dip, crest. Into right five long, into left one long. It's turn right four, tight. And right five, half long, 80. Right two, tightens to one, 60. Right six over crest. Left four, long. And left two. Open 60, left 5 long over crest, right 6, left 6 continues over jump, caution left 6, jump keep mid, left 6, into right 5 don't cut, 60, turn right 2, into left 2 opens long, And left six. And right six. Into left six. Into caution, right five tight, don't cut past junction. Into square left. Into turn right three. Into left two tight, into left six, into right three half long through dip, into left three long, into turn right five, 60, 
right five long into right five long and head in right 60. Hep in left. Right five long. And right by 40 past junction deceptive. Left three. Right four don't cut. Into left three half long don't cut 60. Left four long over crest keep in. And right six, 60. Care hip and right, 100. Six half long 150 over bump dip. Left six and right six over bump 60. Caution left six half long crest jump keep mid and left six. Into turn the queue right 40 to finish. Understanding the techniques used in rally driving will help you understand the relationship between car and road surface and how to be the master of control under extreme pressure. Dirt Rally has a precisely detailed vehicle handling model, so you will need to utilise real-world driving techniques to get through our most technical stages in one piece. Master these techniques and you'll maximise the potential of every car, allowing you to get better stage times and challenge for championship victories. Weight transfer is the core component that most aspects of rally driving revolve around. That is, the inertia of the car's weight as it changes direction. This is the force that makes your body move as the car brakes, accelerates and turns. Weight transfer affects the amount of mechanical pressure applied by each of the four tyres against the road surface. When a car speeds up, slows down or turns, each tyre will experience a difference in that mechanical pressure compared to when the car is stationary. This results in an increase or decrease of the potential grip available. Braking and accelerating produces longitudinal weight transfer and turning produces lateral weight transfer. It can also be influenced by other factors such as the road surface, jumps and crests. Always try and manage the weight transfer at the moment it's required, whether accelerating, braking or turning. This will maximise the grip potential of each tyre, keeping you flowing in and out of sections throughout a stage. It is important to bear this basic principle in mind as you watch these guides, as almost all these techniques are used to manage weight transfer. In rallying, the racing line means the same as in any other form of motorsport. That is, to straighten the track as much as possible through corners. However, unlike some other forms of motorsport where drivers use every inch of the track to find the perfect racing line, rally drivers have only one shot at each corner, so they often leave a small margin for error. 
As a rally stage undulates through forests or curves around mountains, it is not always possible to see the racing line. Accurate pace notes are vital so that you know where to place the car on the road even if the section ahead is not immediately visible. You should also listen out for obstacles such as gateposts or piles of logs that may cause you to take a slightly different line through a corner than you otherwise would. When you're out on stage, make sure you listen to your co-driver and position your car appropriately for the road ahead. Always try and allow a small margin for error. When you hear drivers talking about maximum attack, they are talking about when they are pushing as hard as they can to get the most out of the car. This often leads to some of the most spectacular moments in rallying as drivers set stage records or push too far and have an event ending crash. Knowing when to push and when to be conservative are vital when competing in an event. If you're recovering from a mechanical issue and you're trying to make up time to the rest of the field, it may be a valid strategy to push harder as you have very little to lose. If you're in the top three and setting competitive stage times, it may be more sensible to take a conservative approach and avoid any big risks. In reality, drivers often take a measured approach, driving at 95% of their full potential so as not to make any big mistakes while still maintaining a competitive pace. In Dirt Rally, this measured approach is advisable as you get to grips with your car and how it responds to the stages and the conditions. If the front wheels of a car lose traction with the road surface while attempting to steer, the car enters a state known as understeer. Understeer is always bad and never intentionally used in any rally driving technique. In fact, some of these techniques are used specifically to avoid understeer. Understeer occurs if traction has been partially lost. The car will continue to corner, but at less of an angle than the direction of the front wheels the car will feel like it is pushing forward. In this situation, applying more steering angle often makes the situation worse, as doing so requires even more traction than was initially being asked of the front tires. If the wheels have entirely lost traction, the car will cease turning and will slide in the direction it was traveling before the wheels locked. This is particularly common while steering under heavy braking, as the traction of the tire is being used partly to slow the car down and partly to turn. The correct response is to stop any input to the brake and accelerator and reduce the steering angle. This allows the weight of the car to settle and traction to be regained. On loose surfaces such as gravel and snow, there is an increased chance of understeer due to the reduced level of grip, so techniques are often used to induce oversteer to prevent the car from understeering in the first place. Front wheel drive cars are particularly prone to understeer as all braking, accelerating and turning forces go through the front tyres. Understeer can occur while accelerating if the combined forces of accelerating and steering overcome the traction available. A similar loss of traction can occur due to braking and steering. Rear wheel drive cars are least prone to understeer as the front tyres are only used to brake and turn. In fact, their characteristics are more prone to oversteer. Four-wheel drive cars tend to exhibit the characteristics of front-wheel drive cars under braking on corner entry and rear-wheel drive cars under acceleration on corner exit. Rally teams work hard to reduce these characteristics and give a more balanced setup. Remember, understeer is always bad. When rally driving, make sure you try and avoid it at all costs. If the rear wheels of a car lose traction with the road surface while attempting to steer, the car enters a state known as oversteer. This is when the angle of the car exceeds that of the steering input and the rear of the car steps out of line with the front. 
Unlike understeer, oversteer is often used as a technique to increase the speed at which corners can be taken. By proactively eliminating understeer, a higher exit speed can be achieved. How oversteer is induced and controlled depends on the type of drivetrain in the car. By definition, front-wheel drive cars do not have any drive to the rear wheels. Therefore, oversteer cannot be induced by applying the throttle, but can be induced by using weight transfer. Once a front-wheel drive car enters oversteer, the attitude of the car can be controlled by steering with opposite lock, accelerating, decelerating or braking. Applying opposite lock while accelerating will effectively speed up the front of the car and will bring the rear of the car back in line. If more oversteer is required, for example if the corner is tighter than expected, decelerating or braking will increase the amount of oversteer by maintaining the weight over the front wheels and therefore reducing the grip on the rear. As the rear wheels of a four-wheel drive vehicle are powered, you can also induce and maintain oversteer by using the throttle to spin the wheels. Depending on the ratio of power delivery between front and rear wheels, the car may have a tendency to oversteer more or less on corner exit. If the ratio is biased towards the front, under acceleration the car may pull itself out of oversteer. However, if the ratio is biased toward the rear, applying power may increase oversteer by spinning the rear wheels. Subtle control of the steering, throttle and brake is used to initiate, maintain and exit oversteer and the same weight shifting techniques apply to four-wheel drive as for front-wheel drive cars. Unlike front and four-wheel drive cars, rear-wheel drive cars require the opposite technique with regard to throttle control during oversteer. Oversteer can be induced and maintained by weight transfer but also by applying power to brake the traction of the rear wheels. Once oversteer has been initiated, continuing to apply power will maintain the slide. In order to limit or correct oversteer, throttle input must be reduced. Lift-off oversteer occurs when, during cornering, you lift off the throttle. Because the car is slowed by engine braking, there will be a certain amount of longitudinal weight transfer which will unload the rear tyres, causing them to partially lose traction with the road. In a front-wheel drive car, this weight transfer alone is enough to induce oversteer because the front of the car is usually heavier than the rear. In four-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive cars, Although the difference in the static weight between the front and rear may not be as great as a front-wheel drive car, the effect is amplified by engine braking also acting on the rear wheels as they are unloaded by the weight transferring forward. The key thing to remember is that oversteer is used as a technique to increase the speed at which corners can be taken. Handbrake turn is used in rallying more than in any other form of motorsport. The aim of performing a handbrake turn is to get the car to dramatically oversteer at relatively low speed, which enables a tighter turn to be taken than using the steering axis of the wheels only. Weight shift is still required and you must use the momentum of changing direction with the steering in conjunction with the handbrake to get the rear of the car to slide. The handbrake can also be used to induce oversteer in a more open corner if there is insufficient traction on the front wheels to get the car to turn in at the required point. Remember, handbrake turns are used to navigate very tight corners such as hairpins that would be difficult or slow to drive around normally. So listen out for these types of corners in the pace notes. Unlike a race circuit where drivers learn every inch of the track, rally drivers tackle hundreds of kilometers of unique road during every rally. And so in order to be fast and safe, they use pace notes. Not all pace notes are the same. Which system is used and what features of the road are called out are down to driver preference and can vary greatly from one driver to the next.
There are many variations of co-driver systems used, but in Dirt Rally, we use 6 to 1, made famous by the legendary man himself, Colin McRae. In this system, 6 is the fastest, least severe corner, and 1 is a slow, almost 90 degree corner. We then have square, hairpin and acute to describe even tighter corners. There is a general misconception that the number relates to the gear you should be in, but this isn't always the case. If you come out of a right 2 in 2nd gear, immediately into a left 6, you are unlikely to change straight into 6th gear. Distances are generally given in metres, for example, 60, 80 or 100, unless the corners are really close together, in which case AND or INTO may be used. Additional description of detail in the road ahead is also necessary. Calls such as CARE, CAUTION and DOUBLE CAUTION signify sections where extra care should be taken. Descriptions such as OPEN, TIGHTEN or DOUBLE TIGHTEN are used when the angle of the corner changes midway through. Corner length is also described using HALF LONG, LONG or CONTINUES FOR. Crests, bumps and jumps, as well as other variations that you can drive through such as bad camber, dips and water splashes are also called out. Perhaps the most important calls of all are those telling you when an obstacle is present, meaning that you should avoid cutting the corner or running wide on corner exit. In these situations the co-driver will call don't cut. It is vitally important that you listen to your co-driver and don't cut in these situations. Another important aspect of pace notes is the timing. This is the point at which the co-driver delivers the note to you, relative to the position on the road. Again, this is down to preference, but it is common for the pace notes to be delivered one or two corners ahead of where the car is on the road. This allows you to build up a mental picture of the road ahead, so that you can put the car in the correct attitude at the correct time to achieve maximum speed. While some drivers prefer pace note to be delivered later than others, it is critical that you are given each note before the point at which you would need to react to them. The most obvious example of that would be a breaking point for a corner. If the pace note is given to you after the point at which you would need to break, particularly for a corner that cannot be seen on approach, this is a late note. Many crashes in rallying have been caused by the co-driver not giving the driver the pace note in time. If you want to, you can adjust the co-driver call timing in the player preferences menu so that the calls are delivered with the timing that suits you. As with braking, weight transfer is an extremely important aspect of making a rally car turn. Simply turning the steering wheel does not guarantee that the car will move in the desired direction. As a driver, you must ensure that the weight is transferred to the correct place at the correct time. In general, the weight should be transferred to the outside front wheel relative to the direction of the corner. Braking places the weight of the car over the front wheels, but other factors should be considered, such as the current attitude of the car and the characteristics of the road. The current attitude of the car will vary depending on the section of road ahead. Two corners in the same direction will mean that the weight will already be in the correct place to take the second corner after the first. 
with two corners in opposite directions, you'll have to make sure that the weight is transferred to the other front wheel after the first corner before the car will change direction for the second. The rate at which the weight transfers in any direction is dependent on the surface, the available grip and the setup of the car. In sequences of corners that change direction, you can use the pendulum effect to help the car change direction from one corner to the next. Crests, jumps, dips and other obstacles can all destabilize the car and stop you from transferring the weight to the correct wheel, and so these factors need to be taken into account. Making sure that the weight is transferred to the correct place at the right time is one of the most important aspects of rally driving, so make sure you keep this in mind at all times. There is a common misconception that to drive a rally car quickly, you need to wrestle the steering wheel one way, then the other, as much as possible. When you turn the steering wheel, you are transferring the weight of the car to the wheels on the side where it's needed to load the suspension and provide traction for turning. If you rapidly move the weight from one side to the other, it is likely to destabilize the car, making it difficult to control. Continuing the soaring action on the steering wheel will progressively make the situation worse until either a crash or a spin has occurred. When cornering or making corrections to the steering, you should apply the minimum amount of steering necessary. In conjunction with other techniques, such as left foot braking to induce oversteer, the amount of steering input necessary may be considerably lower than would be required for the same angle corner in a road car. As well as keeping the car as stable as possible, using the minimum amount of steering takes the least time to apply and then remove. Consider a situation where the car unexpectedly and significantly oversteers. If you were to apply a lot of opposite lock, it may correct the situation. However, the rear wheels may suddenly grip, snapping the car out of oversteer, and you may have to rapidly unwind the opposite lock in order to prevent the car from transferring into oversteer in the other direction. Excessive steering lock would only serve to make this situation more difficult to control. So remember, always try to use the minimum amount of steering input possible in conjunction with other techniques to make sure the car remains as stable as possible.
five, four, three, two, one, go. Left five continues for 100, but over bump. Right six, bump dip. Caution slowing. Into right five, into hairpin right. To left five, 60, keep right over crest. Left six, dip. Caution right six, 80. Acute left 60. Left six. Into right four long, 60. Right three, don't cut. Into left four. Into right three, tight 260. Left four, into left four, into a Q right. Into hairpin left. Left six, half long. Stay mid over crest, past junction. Into right three, long, keep in. Into left two, long through dip, crest. Into right five. Into right two, late. Into turn left two. Into square right. Left five, tight. Into right six. Into left six. Into right six, 60. Right one. Into turn left, one pass junction. And left four. Into right six, 60. Keep right over jump, 100. Right six over jump, tight to right five. Left six. Into right four over small press, tight. Into caution right one down. Into right four, 60. Caution keep right over crest. Into open hairpin left. Into right six. Into left two. Into turn left two. To right one over crest, into left five, left six through dip 80, right one tight post outside, into crest, into right four, into left four, caution left six, into immediate turn square left, don't cut. Into left four long. Into right six. Into right one. Small crest. Into right two. Into left six and right three over crest jump 80 left six through dip 80 double portion right five over big jump and left five long to finish front left puncture